everybody, I'm Ahmad Rashad, and this is Real TV. A boat can't stop. A racer screams toward the beach at 200 miles an hour. I thought I was going to make my mic It'll be a rough trip dragged behind a horse. It's mating season, and this riled-up deer ain't letting anyone on his turf. Plus, trackside reporters get rammed. And forget the eight seconds. These cowboys ride till they get tossed. Don't blink. It's 30 minutes of the shots you don't want to miss right now on Real TV with Ahmad Rashad. Welcome to the show. We begin today with one of those stories where your instinct is to cover your eyes or look away, but you just can't help watching what happens. And they're moving. It's the liquid quarter mile outside Reno, Nevada. Speedboating's best scream across Lake Lahontan. I guess your California boat is owned by Dick and Sylvia Sugden. 396 cubic inch Chrysler. Here comes the first round of top fuel. That's Dick Sugden's boat in the outside lane. Moments later, the race stops, but Dick's engine doesn't. No. Don't shut down. Get out, Dick. Dick's boat slams into the beach at almost 200 miles an hour in front of the camera, spectators, and his wife, Sylvia. I started screaming in a panic, not knowing whether I was going to find a husband that was dead or alive. But check out the second look. Right there, you see Dick bails out just before the crash. Heads up on the beach, rescues on the way into the launch ramp. Dick is alive, but he's unconscious as he's rushed to the hospital 55 miles away. When Sylvia arrives at the hospital, she faces a horrible decision. The vascular surgeon approached me to sign papers to have his foot amputated. But at the last minute, the Sudgans are spared. Dick not only regains consciousness, he also regains the use of both his feet. They said there was a possibility that I would never walk again. But I was very lucky to get out of that one. Lucky and smart enough to reevaluate his priorities. I look at each day differently. I got a little bit closer to my family then because they came that close. I enjoy every day now. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. I think you get the idea. A home video camera rolls at the rodeo in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Next up is the scoop race, where horses pull riders around the arena using tow ropes. You know it's got to hurt, because these guys sit on nothing more than a giant shovel head. It's a little weird to see grown men bounce around on their bottoms, but the crowd loves it. Now, just out of camera range, a new rider starts his run. That's when a cowboy waiting for another event gets tangled in the tow rope. We've got an extra rider. Hold on. To make matters worse, the woman on the horse doesn't even realize what's happening. Randy Domino is the man in trouble. There's a clown that finally ran out there in front of her about halfway back down the arena and got her stopped. I thought I was going to make my makers what I thought. You know, I was, I was flipping in the air, and every, every time I'd flip and come down, I'd come down like face first. No doubt Randy will have some serious saddle sores tomorrow, but he says that won't keep him out of the ring. Scoop racing is a real thing on real TV. We've got an extra rider. When the record light goes on, real TV is off and running. The back roads of Aztec, New Mexico are gonna get ugly. Deputy Carlos Loomis gets the call and flips a Yui. Me and my partner knew we were in for a potential dangerous situation. A bad girl is behind the wheel of this stolen car. 
Cops have been on her tail for miles, but she's a quick one, sometimes hitting speeds up to 115 miles an hour. coming through the intersection, approximately 90 miles an hour. She had no regard for traffic signals, nearly causing several accidents. The mad woman is not alone. There's a guy in the passenger seat. If the cops can help it, the two will hit a spike strip right about now. She dodges it. But this girl's got another thing coming. Cops throw out a second strip, and she nails it. She ran over a set of stops that still traveling down Harper Hill. Her tires are blown to bits. Now it's a foot chase. We began running into a, an apartment complex uh, just behind some trees, and we didn't know what they were going to do once, once we gained sight of them again, whether or not they were going to be waiting with a knife or a gun. Officer Loomis lucks out. The takedown is swift and safe. Cops cuff the suspects and drag their sorry butts to court. You're watching Real TV. The man in our next story is an expert when it comes to dealing with animals, but on this day, he crosses paths with a beast that just may get the better of him. Dean Stratton knows deer. He makes wild animal calls for a living at his Missouri Research Center, and hunters swear by his product. But today, Dean has called on the wrong deer. It is the height of the mating season, and this young buck is defending his territory at all costs, even if it costs Dean his life. Mike, get in here and the pass, please. Pick right in the Harder. He's gonna kill me if you don't. Luckily, the cameraman is around to help out. This buck is not easily convinced. finally gets the upper hand. He's got some cuts and bruises, but it could have been a lot worse. We can't do that again. Then he gets his rifle. It looks pretty serious, but it's not what you might think. He's gonna shoot the deer all right, but with a tranquilizer to get it back in the pen. And next time, Dean's gonna take a good long look before he opens the door. Mating season, huh? You think that deer might have been a little confused? Still to come. If we make a mistake, we're in great jeopardy. The 40-ton beast is in trouble. They have to nuzzle up close to help it out. Plus, a whole lot of real sliding, peg grinding mess ups. Still the first and still the best. You're watching Real TV. Tell a friend you're watching Real TV. Welcome back. The folks on our next few tapes are living proof that no matter how you take a hit or a fall, it always hurts. Roaring engines mark the start of a dune buggy race in Mexico. But a couple of reporters get a little too close to the story. Watch again. The two front runners battle for first over the jump. One lands off track and pummels two journalists. Crewmen rush to lift the car off the downed reporters. One of them breaks three ribs, and the other suffers only a few scratches. But if you think that hurt, skateboarder Justin Hadlock's about to get a one-way ticket to the House of Pain. You've seen teens bomb on the board before. But this one's below the belt. In Mexico, a news crew reports live the morning after a torrential rainstorm. Heavy winds knocked over a giant billboard. City workers are on scene to begin the repair. But 
And this is no easy task. The monster piece of metal flips, throws Jose Martinez off balance, and he plummets to the ground. Luckily, medics arrive and stabilize Jose. He suffers only minor bumps and bruises. Repeat after me. This is the home of the world's best. Caught on tape. I don't think she'll be breaching anytime soon. One of Mother Nature's rarest and most powerful creatures is in trouble. A giant northern right whale became entangled in a fishing net off the coast of Massachusetts. And a Coast Guard camera captures the heart-wrenching scene. Part of the net is attached to a float. And the float is preventing the whale from diving. It will eventually, if not released, probably not any longer be able to feed uh, and eventually will starve to death. Charles Mayo, a whale expert from the Center for Coastal Studies, gets the call for help. Together with the Coast Guard, they will try to rescue the whale. They begin with attaching more floats and buoys onto the creature in hopes of slowing it down. Then, they'll try and get up close to the whale to cut the lines that are attaching it to the float. But they soon find it's not that easy. The creature beats its tail in protest. We're looking at a perhaps 40-ton whale. If we make a mistake, we're in great jeopardy. Hours go by, and the whale isn't tiring as they expected. It's beginning to look hopeless. Mayo knows that time is running out. Night is falling, and they have to work fast. So here we're now really at the ultimate moment. We've decided we've got to move in. The whale slowed as much as we can expect for this day, and uh, we've put the boat right in close. There she is right there. Get her, get her, get her. Come on. But for the whale, it's too close for comfort, and it looks like it's about to attack. But just as it thrashes in anger, Dr. Mayo makes the crucial cut, setting the mammal free. They got it! Seconds later, the whale disappears out to sea. It's an awesome sight! But no one could be happier to see the creature make its journey back home than the fearless man who set it free. It's relief at the end that an animal of extraordinary rarity is, uh, is still alive. Straight ahead. Get off my back. These bulls don't care who you are. They still punish you. Plus, a rare look at the world around you. Ahmad is back in a bit with lots more of the world's best shots. Caught on tape. Expect an eyeful. This is Real TV. Welcome back. All bull riding may seem the same, but it's not. You're about to see one rodeo that makes all others seem sane in comparison. This may look like a rodeo, but it's not. It's a jarapeo, a Mexican bull riding contest, and it's a lot different from the American version. There are fewer rules, and there's a lot more drinking. First of all, forget the eight-second bell. You ride until the bull stops, or you go flying. That's why these cowboys hook themselves in with sharpened spurs. Sometimes it helps. And sometimes it just buys them more punishment. Mexican bull riders can use one hand, two hands, or no hands at all. This guy only has one hand, but the bull does him just like any other rider. And south of the border, audience participation is allowed. Anyone with a belly full of tequila can get in the ring. Check this out. A brawl breaks out in the middle of the arena. But that doesn't mean the competition stops. He's riding the bull right through the crowd. And not everyone is paying attention. Watch it again in slow motion. By the time he reacts, he's arena roadkill. There he 
isn't enough prize money in the world for this kind of pain. But as long as there are cheering crowds and plenty of liquid courage, guys will be willing to go for the glory. There is not enough prize money or tequila in the world to get me in that ring. A world of hurt is just around the corner, right here on Real TV. Adios, muchachos. This is peg grinding, but the only things these guys are grinding are their butts. Believe it or not, they get paid for this. They're pros, and when it comes to wiping out... These BMXers can eat it with the best of them. Did you know that Real TV is seen in over 70 countries all over the world? A three-year-old boy is stuck in an abandoned well, and that's the good news. The bad news is, the well is more than 100 feet deep, and Javier Gonzalez could still fall another 80 into the freezing cold water below. Rescuers lower a specially designed camera into the narrow hole. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen feet. Still, no sign of Javier. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Nothing. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Then, suddenly, the camera spots the tiny victim. Rescuers tell Javier to wrap his arms through the straps and hold on tight. It's a one-shot deal. As they pull up the camera, they also pull up Javier. The two-hour ordeal ends successfully. The crowd cheers for a job well done, while Javier and his parents shed tears of relief. But thanks to these firemen, this little boy is unharmed and back where he belongs. Tell a friend you're watching Real TV. Before we go, we wanted to show you some dazzling footage of Life Speeded Up, including a look at the night sky you may have never seen before. We love getting video from Greg Hensley. The inventive cameraman has sent us sped up scenes of everything from cars to ball players to nature. But now Greg's time lapse technique is taking us to new heights. You're looking at stars move through space hundreds of times faster than normal. Greg gets these amazing scenes by opening up his frame rate to as much as one and a half minutes per frame. Remember this? That's the comet Hale Bop as it passed us by a few years ago. And check out these spacey shots of the moon and the sun. Greg spent 15 nights in Western Colorado getting these pictures. He also ended up getting a cold. But he says that's a small price to pay for spectacular scenes like these. That's going to do it for us today, but we leave you with some folks doing some amazing tricks with their bodies. So long, everybody.